My name is Simon Volta. Uh, I am the Regional Account Director here at B Technologies. Um, I am joined today by Jason Ferguson, who's our account executive uh, in the QuickBooks space, as well as Will Oliver, who's one of our account managers, uh, helping with the conversions from Shipgear to Starship. Um, so you'll most likely be dealing with uh, either Jason or Will uh, at some point as you look to transition to Starship. Um, we're going to go through a short presentation here, uh, talk a little bit about Starship, the main features, uh, and then we're going to do a quick little demonstration of the Starship solution for all of you so you can see that in action with QuickBooks. Uh, and then, like I said, we'll turn that over to uh, some questions here at the end as well. Um, so a little bit about us, um, obviously most of you, if not all of you know who V Technologies is. Uh, you've been using our Shipgear product, which we definitely appreciate by the way, uh, for many years. Um, but we were founded way back in 1987. Um, Starship, uh, for those of you who don't know, has really been around since 1989. So well over 30 years Starship has existed for. Um, it's really our uh, flagship product. Um, working in many different ERPs, uh, but most importantly, QuickBooks uh, for all of you. And we have about 20 years experience with the Intuit team on a direct integration with QuickBooks, uh, which is which is great to, to be a part of. Um, we've had over 10,000 different companies over the past 30 years uh, use our product in one way or another. Um, and we have also uh, 40 employees that are kind of spread out now throughout the US. Uh, most of them here reside in the Connecticut headquartered area uh, where VTech resides. So as we get going, um, I want to re really address four of the key features that I'm going to sort of focus around today when we do the uh, demonstration for all of you. Um, when we look at Starship, Starship is really a multi-carrier um, shipping platform. Um, it's designed to help not only with all of your parcel needs, uh, but also any LTL needs that you also have. So if you're shipping pallets, Starship can assist you with generating a bill of, doc a bill of lading document, uh, any pallet labels. It can do rate coding right from the application as well based on your rates. Um, so again, that's something that we can talk to you further about, uh, but it's really designed to bring all of your shipping applications you're using today, like your world ship, your ship manager, all of those essentially are gonna be removed and Starship essentially takes its place to generate all your shipping documents. Um, we also will be talking a little bit about how we can help maybe reduce freight spend by having one application and bringing your information in from QuickBooks uh, in one place. Um, we're basically um, allowing you to do all your rate shopping um, right in one screen, uh, be able to see uh, all of your lowest rates up at the top um, with all of your carriers. Uh, compare maybe parcel to an LTL carrier, see which way is better to ship it with. Um, and then also look at those discounted postage rates that we're also offering to all of you, uh, maybe where we can save some money on all those surcharges you might be experiencing with say UPS or FedEx um, that you know post office might be a good fit for. So again, we'll take you through that as we go through the demonstration. Uh, our e-commerce integrations, which is also, as we talked to a lot of QuickBooks users in the past years, uh, E-commerce is really relevant for a lot of those users, really for any user out there. Um, it gives them another place um, for orders to come through. Uh, but we have many different e-commerce integrations, which I have a slide here in a moment to show you of all the different uh, marketplaces and shopping carts that we can potentially support um, and bring tracking information, bring you know, update statuses and things like that for you. So if you're doing things manually today, we can assist as part of the integration. Uh, and then also we'll talk about simplifying your shipping paperwork, right? Um, how do we, you know, generate maybe a commercial invoice or how do we generate hazmat paperwork, um, bill ladings, um, all of these pieces Starship is able to produce. And the reason we're able to produce them is because we do bring in all your different items from QuickBooks and store various pieces of information that allows us to print these various shipping documents for you. Um, so again, if you're printing them in the front office and bringing them to the back, putting them with a shipping label today, that can be all automated through our application for you. So again, those are really kind of the four points that I wanna really um, talk to a little bit about today um, as we go forward. Uh, before we go there, um, I did put together a quick slide on just things that have come out in speaking with a lot of Shipgear users over the past you know, several years um, and just wanna put you know, maybe things to bed, right? And kind of ease everyone's concern 
uh, of what happens when you transition um, to Starship Cloud from Shipgear. Um, so first and foremost, um, all carrier platforms, meaning World Ship, Ship Manager, any post office platform, DHL platform, whatever carrier you might be using essentially goes away. Uh, we do not um, integrate with the carrier applications. We take your account information and load that into Starship, and therefore you will use Starship to generate all your shipping documents as needed. All the tracking, all the freight costs will be written back in QuickBooks as it is today through Starship. Um, so we are using APIs to make that connection so we can see your live rates, right, and provide that information back to QuickBooks. Um, so again, that's just one of the big things that we get a lot of from a lot of Shipgear users. Do we still use WorldShip? The answer is no. Uh, it's something you will use Starship moving forward. Um, QuickBooks Enterprise Server. Um, it either has to be hosted locally in, in your building um, or through a private hosting firm. Um, QuickBooks does work with or partners with a company called Right Networks. Um, so for those of you who might be using Right Networks, unfortunately, um, neither our Shipgear or Starship product work in Right Networks environment. Um, we need to be in a private, dedicated environment, um, somewhere where you can build and grow. Um, but the, that's the most important thing, being in your own environment and not being shared amongst other company files. Uh, we work with various solutions in, these, in this space. One's up on the list here, Fishbowl Hosted Solutions is one. Go to my ERP, Nubay, um, and there's others, right, that we do work with as well. These are the, seem to be the most popular in the QuickBooks space when we look at private hosting. Um, so either of those two options will be supported. Uh, and then also QuickBooks Enterprise, we do get this asked a lot, is it's also supported with our Starship Cloud. Even though cloud is a true cloud solution, we will load online connectors onto PCs um, to make the connection to your enterprise desktop work the way it needs to work um, and make that connection happen in real time. Um, there's no more VPN or remote desktop needed, right, as you may need with Shipgear. Starship, again, is a browser-based application, which you'll see you can log in from home and while you're traveling um, in the office, right? You'll log in as you normally would any website um, and see any information right at your fingertips as needed. So again, that's another advantage. And then also the abilities I mentioned already here to rate shop all of your parcel and all of your LTL shipments in one place um, is one of the other advantages you're going to have. Why do we convert to cloud, right? Uh, another popular question we may get from a lot of users, why do I wanna to go to cloud? Why not stay with our on-premise application that we have today running? Um, most of you may have heard, or many of you may have heard of the di uh, digital transformation out there. A lot of people are getting away from on-premise based servers um, and that's where we're headed, right? That's kind of the direction that, you know, a lot of our customers are going is we don't wanna manage servers anymore. We don't have these high IT expenses to manage, right? One of the main advantages, Starship Cloud, it updates itself, right? Um, we don't have uh, to maintain our servers anymore uh, in your environment, right? You don't have to worry about upgrades. Um, Starship's always gonna worry, work on the latest version for you. So when you come into work every morning, um, it's just gonna run the way it should run, right? Without you may knowing there may be added features, right? So it will do its own thing overnight. Um, and you just have to worry about logging in and start using it the next morning. Um, accessibility to unlimited users and all the carrier interface is another huge advantage for us with the cloud application. There's no more a la carte, like with our on-premise based application where you pay by user, pay by carrier. You now have access to giving it to anyone to use with certain permissions, as well as accessing any one of our 25 different carrier applications just with a simple monthly cost. Um, which is a, a huge advantage versus paying, again, per module, per user. Um, and seasonality. Seasonality seems to be a really big thing for a lot of users. Um, we're coming into the holiday season here, um, so we see a lot of folks' volume spike um, during holiday time. Um, and again, that may happen with you where you can manage your plan, where you can bring your plan up during that busy season and bring it back down as needed when it slows down. So you have full control on your pricing. It's not a flat pricing throughout the year. Um, and again, restricting access to users on certain functions, right? You don't want to give your shipper maybe access to the um, subscription portal where you can change plans and maybe charge more, right? Um, and same thing, maybe you want to give access to the front office for rate quoting, but you don't want them to print a label. Um, so you have full control as administrators to go in and kind of lock down certain pieces to the application as needed.
this just gives you a quick little uh, overview of the different carriers we support, right? Again, I mentioned about two dozen here carriers between LTL and Parcel. Again, I make mention that if you don't see your carrier listed on here, not to worry, right? We do have ways where we can support different LTL carriers as well as some parcel carriers with some user-defined modules, as well as a bill of lading module for LTL to generate. So, and we can talk to you further about that if those are need uh, for you. Uh, this just gives you a quick uh, advantage of the different marketplaces and shopping carts that we work with as well. So again, we can work here in a direct mode, meaning pull orders out of these uh, shopping carts and process those and send tracking numbers back. We can also work through as what we call uh, an extension. Um, so what that simply means is we flow your, you know, you have your orders flow through QuickBooks. We pick up that order through QuickBooks and then process that uh, order for you and then send the tracking both to both places in that case, both the QuickBooks and to say WooCommerce or to Amazon um, for you. So you don't have to do that manual any longer. So um, again, something we can talk further about if this is one of your uh, needs here. All right, so I'm gonna jump out of here and just show you a quick little demonstration and then we'll kind of open it up to some uh, questions for everyone to, to ask away. All right, so let me just log in here, okay. So, um, so when we log into Starship, um, as I mentioned, it is a cloud-based application. So first thing first, we will, each one of you will have your own dedicated uh, URL that's designed for your company when you first sign up. Um, as you log in, you come to essentially your main screen. The main screen will have all of your orders in real time. The minute we save an order in QuickBooks, it appears here for you as a shipper to process the order. Uh, you have basically the same little lookup window as you do in Ship Gear um, up here in the left corner uh, where you can scan in. If you have a barcode, right, um, you can scan that in. You can type in an order number as well and basically populate that into the screen. If you don't want to do either of those and you want to use a little shortcut, you can use a shortcut off to the right. Any one of these truck icons here where my cursor is can do the same thing and pull the order in for you. You can add filters across the top. So you have the ability of adding as many filters as you like. Um, so if you want to filter by dates, by customer, really up to you to kind of simplify this list for you. Um, really your choice on what you want to filter across the top here. All right, so as I pull my order, right? So I'll pull in my order and then everything here is basically going to show up on one screen for you. Um, so the first thing here is that you're gonna see is that we have our sender information um, up at the top, which is a default sender location for yourself. Um, we can support drop shipping. So I know a lot of you may do some drop shipping on behalf of someone else. We can change what we call sender IDs in that case, meaning make it look like it's coming from someone else other than yourself. Um, so again, we can talk to you about your drop shipping profiles if needed there as well. Um, also recipient, this is pulling in from the ship to side of it from QuickBooks. Um, so all of this information populates for you. We do an address validation for both parcel as well as LTL. Um, so just you know keep that in mind, this green checkbox is just telling you everything is checked out to be good. Um, a red X would have populated here if something were to be wrong. Um, and we would have popped open a box being coming back from the post office saying, hey, by the way, here's some validated addresses for you to choose, or you can always use original if you decide to do that as well. Just note, we also do a secondary validation, checking for residential versus commercial. So you'll see in this case, this is a residential address coming back. Um, so therefore, um, we're gonna tack on a residential surcharge, or I should say UPS will tack on a residential surcharge um, down below in the rate quotes. The ship via mechanism that you have in QuickBooks, um, we can map to that. In this case, we map that in coming in for UPS ground. So what you see here is defaulted to your UPS account number. Um, if you need to do third-party shipping, we have capabilities of allowing to set up third-party IDs inside of um, Starship so we can default the proper account numbers to be populated, either pulling in from QuickBooks or hard coding that in from Starship. Um, so again, I know a lot of customers do third-party shipping these days. Um, so if you do have that need, um, we can speak to you and how we can help you there and automate that process as well. Um, the shipment detail side of it is a live menu. So this will change based on the carrier you've selected. Um, in this case, these will show you all of your UPS options. Um, insurance, very popular with a lot of users, CODs, hazardous, right? One thing I like to point out in here is that we do have QuantumView notified built into Starship. 
Um, we do use this from a, uh, an exception standpoint. Uh, so the exceptions are with those packages have left your door. Um, UPS has a, um, a delivery failure due to weather, mechanical, any of those things. And they're going to send those emails out um, to any of the five email addresses you have either brought in from QuickBooks or map, uh, mapped in from the Starship side. Um, you also have the capability of typing in an email address if needed. Um, so very popular feature. You can have this auto enabled. Um, Starship does support something called the notify built into it to send out your ship and delivery notifications, which I'll kind of give you a quick sneak peek at um, where you can customize your own templates um, to be sent out with some more information as well. Um, and then one of the differences that you'll have with Starship, as I mentioned from earlier, is you will have all of your line items coming in. Um, you have the option of defaulting that all into one box. You can have those defaulted into separate boxes if you needed to, meaning where I can define an item to a particular box size at all times. Um, you can add boxes as needed um, very easily with this little click of an icon. Um, just like World Ship or Ship Manager, we do support a full packaging database here um, for the shippers to pick and choose what box they want to use. You will see the default dimensions and the weights associated to those box names that you have listed. Um, we also support dimensional weight. So this little field here is reading in your DIM divisor, doing a quick calculation and making sure that the actual weight is represented correctly. Um, so you don't have any issues with rate quoting um, from down below. Um, and just a quick note, we do support scales. So your standard Mettler Toledo, Cuba scan scales, really any USB connector scale can be you know, plugged in and we can read the weights right in from the boxes as well, um, or from the scales from uh, that as well. <clears throat> um, and then basically um, in the line item view here, you have just mappings from QuickBooks. One thing I like to point out, um, the reason we use line items, as I mentioned earlier, is we save particular information. So things like LTL, um, if you're doing LTL, we save your class information, your NMFC or group name um, is listed here. Any description would be listed here as well. All of this is needed so we can populate that onto your bill of lading, but more importantly, um, use from a rate coding perspective. We also would have an international tab listed here for any international um, shipments you're doing that stores your HTS codes, commercial invoice information, um, USMCA documentation, all of that is also stored at the item level. So it's done the first time, you don't touch it ever again, and it just populates as needed with any of your shipping labels um, from Starship. This section here is showing your rates being pulled in from the ship via side of it. So this will show your UPS rates. We do support three sets of rates, your published, your contracted rates, as well as any applied rates. The applied rates are essentially taking advantage of any markups or freight rules, we like to call them. In this case, you'll see we have a 10% markup being displayed here. Um, this 10% markup is what we send back into QuickBooks to invoice your customer. Um, so this is a very popular feature amongst a lot of users uh, because we know in the shipping world that there's miscellaneous fees that apply. Um, so therefore, um, we want to make sure you cover yourself with some sort of buffer. Um, so again, you can set up any type of rule for any type of customer. It doesn't have to be one rule for everybody. Um, so really up to you how you want to set up your own rules. You can always modify those at any time if needed. Um, and you can have different rules for parcel versus LTL as well, which is uh, pretty neat. And then if you don't like what UPS is showing, kind of the neat feature of Starship here is really the rate shop before we ship it. Um, so down here, you'll have a, an ability to set up different rate shop rules. Um, where we can have that auto run for you and pick your least expensive option at any time. Um, but you can have as many rules or um, you like um, and pick which one you want to use. Or you can literally simply click this little button here and it makes the API calls out to each of your carriers and your license and says, OK, what are my cheapest rates or what are my best rates for this particular shipment? Right. And you can see here I have this sorted on my contracted rate. Um, UPS ground is coming right behind my priority mail priority mail rate for post office um, and you can see it returns a business day. It also tells you the estimated delivery date as well as your contract rate. So in this case, it's gonna cost me $59 to ship it with UPS or it's gonna cost me $43 to ship it with Priority Mail. You have a decision to make. Do I ship it with Priority Mail? If so, I, all I have to do is check the box here and basically it's gonna change it to my Easy Post account, which is our postage provider we use behind the scenes. Um, and basically you'll print your priority mail label at that point 
with post office. So again, very, um, this is kind of what we'll go back to that reducing freight spend, right? This is where we can help you reduce that freight spend versus not being aware of what post office can do for you in this case. Um, and again, if you're ready to ship and process, you can ship and process. This will now print your postage label here for you, as well as get that tracking information back into QuickBooks, and then you can move on to your next order. Um, so as this processes and, and sends the information out, right? Um, basically, you'll see the label populate here with a couple labels that we just processed, right? So you have your standard four by six label that can print to your standard zebra printers. We can also produce packing, packing lists if you want us to. We can help you customize those if needed, or you can print what comes out of the box. But here you can see, here's your first label. Here's your second label, right? With its associated packing list, really up to you what you want to use from that uh, perspective. And then lastly, we have our QuickBooks right back, right? So back into this order, you'll now see that we've listed the service that was actually used, how many tracking numbers associated to each of the, the shipments here, and then anything else you want to tack on. So in my case, I'm adding in all the line items. You can put in box dimensions, weights, et cetera. Um, really up to you from a write back perspective. And then what also we've done is we um, added this custom field called ship status that we can also update with the word process. This allows us to filter those out so we don't duplicate the shipment over again in Starship uh, for you. So I'm gonna um, basically just quickly just show you kind of uh, a dashboard, just give you a quick sneak peek at it. Um, and then show you a quick um, notification email we can generate. Starship does have a full dashboard available for you as well. So we have heat maps or distribution maps showing you where all of your shipments can go. Um, very important from a negotiation standpoint, expansion, whatever you're trying to do, you have the ability of filtering on any of these reports that you see or charts that you should see here. You have all of these charts available to you out of the box. So if you want to get a quick sneak peek of what your package trends look like or your LTL shipment trend looks like, you can do that. If there's any surprises, you have a full report database built into here. So you basically can run any report, uh, download those in Excel, PDF, but you have things like late deliveries, address corrections, parcel detail, LTL detail, et cetera, really for yourselves to run at any point to get the information you need. Um, so you don't have to go back to your carrier reps and try to ask them to pull that for you. Um, and then lastly here, we basically have our notification emails. Um, this comes with your standard licensing. Um, none of this stuff is extra by any means. Um, so again, what you can do here, um, you can essentially, you know, just pick any order here. Um, let's pick this guy, let's see if this one is, All right? So um, as this loads up, right, you'll bas basically be able to see kind of um, you know, what we can do, right? So you can basically put logos. You don't have to put any logos if you don't want to, uh, but basically just thank them for their order, give them their PO number, order number, be on the lookout in this case is going out FedEx, right? When is it gonna arrive for delivery? Maybe insert a table. These can be track, these can be hyperlinked, these tracking numbers. So it would take the user directly out to their website and track their own orders. Maybe even put some marketing information in here. So from a uh, Coupon code, right? You can put all that in here as well um, so they can come back and order additional product from you. So again, we give you a lot of uh, the, the tools along with it um, to try to make this as successful as possible for you. Well, we're right up against time. I, again, I do appreciate everyone uh, taking some time this afternoon out of your busy schedule to join us. Um, and again, like I said, Jason and Will will be in touch. Um, and again, Appreciate your business and loyalty, and uh, hopefully we uh, learned something a little bit today about Starship. And we look forward to seeing you uh, join us on that uh, on that product here soon. So thanks again.